We sent out a survey to our readers at studentloanplanner.com to ask what was your experience with your student loan servicer. And we got a lot of responses back from people who specifically mentioned Navient as their student loan servicer. Navient is pretty much the biggest one out there. It has tons and tons, millions of different borrower accounts. And to understand Navient, you should know that, that Navient is basically a spinoff of Sally Mae. Sally Mae was this giant loan organization that decided to split off its loan servicing group as Navient uh, when you had a lot of the changes around the student loan system about 10 years ago. So Navient has all these borrowers that it's servicing. What is Navient? Navient is this giant publicly traded corporation. That's a stock, right? And their goal is to make as much profit as they can for shareholders. That's why they exist. So that means that they want to have as much revenue and as little expenses as possible to generate maximum profit. Now, the way that student loan servicing contracts work is that the federal government decides, hey, we're going to pay X amount and we're going to have you all bid and let's just see what, you know, what different accounts we're going to allocate you based off of what you bid. So the federal government is notoriously cheap for these specific loan servicing contracts. So in some cases, the government's only going to be paying a few dollars a month even for borrowers to, you know, per account to be serviced. So that means that if you're going to get paid, you know, maybe uh, say just say $20 a year for servicing an account, you have to make sure that that does not take up very much of your time. And also you have to make sure that you don't really hire a lot of customer service people that are really good that are going to cost a lot of money because it would result in a really good customer experience. But the problem is, is if you're a student loan borrower, you are stuck. You can't move your loans easily from place to place. You don't have to opt into them. They get basically relationships with the schools and then, you know, you're stuck with them unless you do either consolidation or refinancing. We'll discuss that in a second. So what are the top three complaints against Navient based off of the student loan planner survey that we did? The first one is that they have terrible customer service. One reader said that I feel like I have to explain the plans to them, which is very true. And, and make, that makes sense when you know how the student loan servicing contracts are awarded, right? It's based on of cost and default rate, how few people are defaulting in their loans as possible. That's the two really things that they judge the contracts on. So name it's pretty good at keeping people from defaulting. It's, it's still not an easy thing to do. But that's why they suggest forbearance is because forbearance is not default, doesn't show up as a black mark on their record, and so then they can move on to the next phone call and keep costs low. So customer service is bound to be really bad when you have the potential to lose thousands and thousands of dollars with bad advice from their, from their folks. So just know that when you're speaking to somebody at Navient that if you're asking for them for advice, you're asking them for something that they're not really paid for. They you know, are going to be giving you something that's just someone who's making $15 an hour's view on, the, on student loans, which could be a good view. But in reality, good advice costs a lot of money because people actually have to know what they're talking about and run the numbers. And to run the numbers, you have to have a certain skill set. And if you don't, if you're making $15 an hour, you probably don't have that skill set. It's not anything insulting. You know, I don't mean anything bad by that. It's just reality, right? So, if you're going to trust Navient for anything that they say, you probably should not. The second big complaint that we got was communication. So frequently, Navient makes it very difficult to get in contact with a real live person. People have said things like, I had to wait for forever to get a hold of a live human being to talk about my problem, and I had to click through all of these automated uh, dialogues system that, gener that the system generates to try to actually get through to a real person. So that's a very common issue that we face uh, help trying to help people navigate the system. It's very frustrating. I get it. Um, you know, dealing with a cable company in a lot of ways is, is maybe a little bit preferable because our, our respondents to the survey rated Navy at 2.7 out of 5 stars. How many of you would go to a restaurant that's rated 2.7 out of 5 stars? I certainly would not, and I'm going to guess you would not either. But unfortunately, this restaurant is forced upon us because of the ridiculous system of the federal government set up. So the last big complaint that we get with Navient is that payments are applied incorrectly or they mess up something with payments. For example, Navient will often suggest forbearance instead of doing income-driven repayment options or actually paying back the loans. Forbearance is a really easy phone conversation. It's easy to process. It's easy to get you off the phone and relax, and it reduces the risk of default. So it makes sense why they want to do it to get you under forbearance instead of an income-based repayment program because that's a longer phone conversation which hurts their handle time average on the phone, which 
probably gets them yelled at by their managers, right? If you want to think about it like that. And then, you know, the costs uh, of servicing the giant pool of borrowers that they have are higher. So if you're going to um, ask them for advice on payments, you know, you shouldn't. The second thing I, I would suggest is that if you do get help from them or you do are, are trying to figure things out with them, apparently Navient's been accused of misapplying payments to loans that are not the highest interest rate loans. Basically, they do it in such a way that costs you money. Or they'll suggest that you go into a forbearance without telling you that that will capitalize your interest and cause your interest to compound. So those are the, the three big complaints that we get custom, about Navient, customer service, communication, and payments. If you want to dump Navient, you can. One way would be to refinance your loans with a private company. So you could go to studentloanplanner.com forward slash refi, R-E-F-I, and that will give you knowledge about different different companies that you could refinance with, and you could even get a cashback bonus if you get a rate with a lower interest rate than you like the deal. Now, the other way to get rid of Navient is by consolidating. Consolidating is taking your loans, creating a new loan with the federal government, and moving that loan to a place like Great Lakes. Great Lakes scores higher on our customer service satisfaction survey that we did with the loan servicers. They're about 3.7 out of 5 stars. They're not perfect, they're not wonderful either, but they are better than Navient from the perception of our uh, our viewers. So, something to think about. If you want to dump Navient, you can. Just go refinance it and get a cashback bonus for doing so or consolidate. And if you want our help making sure that you're not getting screwed over by Navient, we'd love to help you with that. Just go to studentloanplanner.com forward slash help or reach out to us directly at help at studentloanplanner.com. So, Maybe it doesn't have to control your life. You can get a handle on this stuff and you can figure out your student loan debt. Just know that Navient does, probably does not have your best interest at heart. In fact, in the recent lawsuits against them, they pretty much even said that. So have a good day.